1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll begin with verse number 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Amen. In the New Living Translation, the Bible reads, Remember that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. You also must run in such a way that you will win. All athletes... Practice strict self-control. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I am not like a boxer who misses his punches. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Lord, we thank you today. For all that you have done, we thank you for your word. God, we ask that right now you will speak to our hearts. Open up our ears to hear your message. And Lord, I pray that every word that is spoken will be a word that you would have us to hear. And we give you the praise for what you have done. And we ask that you have your way around these authors in a moment. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. For over 30 years of my life, I was blessed to be part of a great Assembly of God church in Van Buren, Arkansas. And on the walls of that sanctuary, in our old auditorium, there was an inscription that said, To God be the glory, great things He has done. Though the past be glorious, the best is yet to come. Amen. And I believe this morning, here at Howe Assembly of God, that that could be said for this church as well. There have been many great revivals break out in this church. There have been many outpourings of the Holy Spirit. And some of the greatest preachers in Pentecost have come and stood in this pulpit. You have heard great singing, and you have heard great preaching. And at one time, I understand that you had a Sunday school attendance of over 200 people. Yes, God has done great things. Yes, the past is great. But I believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we can say here at Howe Assembly of God, to God be the glory. Great things He has done. And although the past may be glorious, the best is still yet to come. Because I believe there is still another sinner out in this community that has never heard the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And they can come to this church and they can find a safe haven of rest for their souls. And there is still an empty individual who is hungry for a pouring out of God's Holy Spirit in their life. And they can still be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the ever evidence of speaking in other tongues. There is still yet another Sunday school attendance record that can be broken. And I believe and I can see it in the near future that this sanctuary right here can be packed to capacity full of people who are hungry for God to do a work in their life like no other can do. And I believe that we can see this auditorium next door packed full of children and teenagers hungry for God to fill them full of the Holy Ghost. But it's all going to take place if we will commit to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth and be in one mind and one accord. Amen. The disciples on the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room, 120 of them, and they prayed. The Bible says they were in one place and in one accord. They were in unity, seeking after the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit Amen. fell. Amen. And the church began to grow. If we will allow God to direct us and allow Him to help us reach the goal in our life, God will bring it to pass. This morning I want to preach to you a message entitled, The Past is Great, But the Future is Better. Amen. We have just entered into a new year. The old year of 2018 is dead and gone, and a new year has now come in fresh with a new beginning. Every year people make their New Year's resolutions. All of the feasts that we have been indulging on from the turkey and the dressing and the smoked ham and the mashed potatoes and gravy and the pumpkin pie and the hot rolls. Oh my goodness. 
I, I talked to a dear sister this morning. She left Sunday school so she could go make her rolls. And I'm thinking, why didn't you bring one back for me? But all of this going on, and now we decide that now that Christmas is over, we're going to start a New Year's diet, and we're going to lose 50 pounds by the end of January. Yeah. I tried it. It doesn't work. You gained back twice as much as you lost the next week. Many times at the start of the new year, we say things like, well, this is the year I want to become debt-free. Or some people may say, this is the year that I want to finally settle down and get married. For half my life, I declared that. And finally, last year on October 13th, it finally came to pass, praise the Lord. I've been married almost three months now. But we all set goals. Sometimes we reach those goals, and sometimes we surpass them. And sometimes we may not quite get too close, but sometimes the goals are never reached at all because we fail to even try. But life is like a race. Life is full of hopes. It's full of dreams and sometimes full of worries. Life can be full of happiness. Sometimes life can be full of sorrow. Sometimes life is full of agreements. Sometimes disagreements. But the pattern of everyday life is so unpredictable. It's just like the ocean tide. You never know what the tide is going to bring in because life is just so daily. But if we will look into the Word of God, we can see the, the design that God has set for us. And we can find the answers to the problems that we face in life. We can find the hope that we need when we're facing a hopeless situation. We can find the determination to reach the goals that God has placed for us in our life. But we, may, we must pay close attention to the fight of life. Amen. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, <coughs> that life is like a race. In a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. Amen. The only way you win in a race is to run in such a way that you can defeat all the obstacles, that you can defeat everything else. You must be disciplined. You must be in good shape. You must have the right nutrition in your life in order to be successful in running a race. It's the same way in our spiritual life. You see, everyone starts out running a race in their spiritual life. But some people end that race by either going to heaven and some end it by going to hell. But we must decide in our heart that we're going to do what's right. That we're going to stand upon the word of the Lord. That we're going to do what He says to do. That we're going to live according to His word. And so we start out running that race when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. But the race is not over. The race has just begun. See, we must be in great shape. We must make sure we get the right nutrition spiritually in our life. You see, when an athlete is trying to be successful, they start out by eating right. They can't run a successful race. They can't play football. They can't play basketball. If all they ever ate was pizza and tacos and macaroni and cheese and pasta, they'd get too fat. They'd get out of shape and they wouldn't be able to be successful in their game. They control what goes in. Likewise, in our spiritual life, we must control what goes in our life. We need to control what kind of things we allow our ears to hear. We need to control what kind of things we allow our eyes to see. Control what you speak. Control what you think. Feast on the Word of God. Because when you think as a fool, we're going to start acting as a fool. If all we ever listen to is a foul mouth conversation, that before long, that foul mouth conversation is going to be initiated by us. Yeah. See, we need to let this year be a year that we can become what God wants us to be. Paul mentions in this text, he said, don't be fighting in the air. Don't be just punching in the wind. In other words, don't be like a boxer who's missing his punches, fighting in the wind. I, I saw a perfect example of this just a few weeks ago. I, uh, on my television, I get this channel that shows very educational and informative programs. And this particular one called The Three Stooges showed uh, the very athletic Jim Howard. I mean, the guy was in tip-top shape. I mean, he was out there, he was boxing, and he was kicking, he was fighting for all he was worth. He had one serious problem, though. The enemy was behind him. His opponent was behind him. And although he had all the good moves, he had all the right kicks and all the right punches, he was just beating in the wind, wasn't accomplishing a single thing. The enemy took one kick at him, knocked him flat out on his back, 
Lost, lost the boxing match. You know, it's the same way. A lot of people in this world, they make it look good. They've got all the right moves. They attend church every time the doors are open. And, you know, they're trying to look all super spiritual. They, they try to sing just like everyone else. They've got good technique. But what's on the inside? Absolutely nothing. You see, the devil may see you running. He may see you shouting. He may see you singing. But you're not fooling him. You may have impressed the church. You may have impressed the pastor. You may have impressed the Sunday school teacher, but God's not impressed. No. Satan knows the difference. And he knows that he's got you exactly where he wants you. You see, we need to get some spiritual goals in our life and allow God to mold us and to change us and to make us into what he wants us to become. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we dwell on how we used to live our life. We dwell on the, the past things that we used to do. But Paul was saying, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I'm forgetting the old lifestyle that's behind. Yes, I had some goals in life, but they were not the right goals. Yes, I had some plans in life, but it was not the right plan. So Paul is saying, I'm forgetting the things that are behind and I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. I heard a, a minister, Dr. Robert Schuler, say many years ago, he said, when setting a spiritual goal in your life, set your goal so high that you know that the only way you can reach it is by the grace and mercy of God Almighty. That way there's nothing you can say that, that can make you accomplish that goal. You accomplish that goal because God brought you to that point. Amen. So I want to set some goals for us as individuals in this church from A to Z. I know that sounds like a 26-point sermon, and I'm going to get you out of here in time to be back for service tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, we're not going to be here all day. A, we need to attend church faithfully. The Bible says don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That's why it's important that we come to church because we face hell itself throughout this week. But we need to come to church so that we can pray for one another, so we can lift one another up in prayer, so that we can encourage each other. And, and, and if a brother is hurting, we can comfort them. If a sister needs prayer, we can pray for her. And, and when we come together, we can... Uh, be the body of Christ and be the church that God wants us to be because we are the church. And Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. See, we need to make sure that we come together and be in one mind and one accord. Attend church every time the doors are open. Did you know that every one of you here in this room this morning, you're the only people in all of this community that can be in church every Sunday morning in 2019 because you're here on this first Sunday. B, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as a comforter. In John chapter 16, verse 7 through 14, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him <coughs> unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have... Yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it to you. We need the Holy Spirit in our life to receive power to witness for Jesus Christ. We cannot go out into the highways and hedges and compel people to come into the house of the Lord unless we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because the power to do that comes from being full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said... Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And this power is to enable you to be a witness. He told the disciples, You shall be witnesses.
Genesis unto me, and all of Judea and Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. He wants them to start their ministry and their hometown and stretch out from there and go into the uttermost parts of the earth. But it starts with being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We need to be a church that is full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. See, we need to be committed to serve. In the Old Testament, when God's people of Israel were brought out of bondage of slavery in Deuteronomy 10, 12, the Bible says, And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot be for God some of the day and be for the world the other time. You must be committed to serve Him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. You must have a made up mind in your life that I am committed to serve the Lord no matter what people say about me, no matter what they're going to do to me, I will go forth with power and boldness through God's strength because God said that He will supply all of our needs. He will do whatever we need. Uh, if He will stay true to Him, He will stay true to you. Stand upon His Word. Yield to His Spirit. He will lead you in the way of truth. He will lead you in the way of righteousness. He will lead you in the way of holiness. So commit to serve Him. Amen. D, we need deliverance from our hindrances. When you are committed to serve God in His ways, He will deliver you from your bondage. There is a scripture in Psalms that says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If you love sin and if you have a desire to keep doing those things, He's not going to deliver you if you still have a desire to keep doing those things that keeps you from Him. And so we must be committed to serve Him in order to receive a deliverance from the things that would keep us from Him. Yep. And, and, and Daniel chapter 3, verse 17, we see the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were committed to serve God, and because of that, God delivered them from the fiery furnace. You see, it made no difference to them. They were committed to serve God. They were committed to pray to the Lord openly and, and not be ashamed of what they were doing for their love for God. And so they said, you can throw us into the fire. You can turn the fire up seven times higher. I don't care how hot it gets. I'm not going to turn my relationship with God in because I'm going to keep on serving Him. I'm going to keep on living for Him. I'm going to stand on His Word. I'm not going to come compromise my holiness standard, but we're going to stand upon His Word. And when you have that kind of determination, when you are committed to serve Him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, the world can come against you. Let the storms come, let hell rage. Jesus will be with you and everything that comes up against you, no weapon will form to no weapon formed against you will prosper because we're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb through Jesus Christ. Amen. He will deliver. Amen. E, we must endure to the end. Endure to the end. Jesus knew that in the generation in which we live, troublesome times would be here. He knew that this world would be in a bad shape. But He said, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Keep on going. And He said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 through 14, He said, nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And he goes on to, and, and toward the end in verse number, what, what is that, verse number 7? Uh, verse number 13. Verse number 13, he says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Life is a journey. Your walk with God is a journey. You cannot make it to the end if you do not endure to the finish line. If you're starting out on that race, you've got to keep on going. Keep enduring until the end. Because it's not until you get to the end. That's when we will hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. F, we need to follow the way of holiness. We need to understand that the God we serve is a God of holiness. And to live for a holy God requires that we live a life of holiness. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, to follow peace with all men and holiness. 
without which no man shall see the Lord. You see, that means we need to get rid of the things in our life that would be a hindrance to our relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the type of music that we listen to, the type of games that we play, the type of television programs that we watch, the internet activity that we have. If it hinders your relationship with God, then get rid of it. If it keeps you from living for God, get rid of it. Dress in a way that will glorify God. Talk in a way that will glorify God. When people look at you, they need to see a reflection of who God is in you. Amen. G, get saved. Get saved. If you have not been saved, if you have not been born again, you need to be. Today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. Don't delay. Jesus could come before you have any other opportunity. See, every one of us in this room has sinned. There's not one single person in this room that's perfect. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says that that sin created a division between us and God. But Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. That's why He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We can get saved. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that He died and rose from the grave to save us, then we will be saved. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. There is no other way. There is no other religion. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. H, I'm believing for healing. Physical healing. Spiritual healing. We serve a God who is a healer. In James chapter 5, verse 14 through 15, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. God is a healer. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes, we are healed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He healed then, He can heal again today. I, we need to indulge on the Word of God. It's by the Word of God that we can understand God's plan in our life. Psalms 119.11 says, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. If you have a sin problem in your life and you want to overcome it, if you have addictions in your life and you want to get rid of it, if you're trying to figure out how you can get rid of the sin, how you can get rid of the filth, put it under the blood and get into the book. Get into the Word of God. Because the more you put of the Word of God into your life, the more of the Word of God that's going to come out. The more of the Word of God into your life, the more He will show. Jay just preached Jesus. We used to hear the phrase so many times, what would Jesus do? Well, here's the thing. Just do what Jesus would do. Man. Don't ask the question. We know what Jesus is going to do. We know what Jesus is going to say. I heard someone say when preaching or teaching, just preach Jesus. When necessary, use words. That means preach the Word of God. Preach the Word of God uncompromised. Do what Jesus would do. Go where Jesus would go. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.23, But we preach Christ and Him crucified. So we're going to preach the cross of Jesus Christ. We're going to preach a message here at Howe Assembly that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're going to preach a message that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. We're going to preach a message here at Howe Assembly that says we serve a God who still saves, who still heals, who still delivers, who still baptizes in the Holy Ghost, who is still coming again, who is still seated upon the throne, ever living to make intercession for you and for me. That's the kind of God that we serve. Okay, we need to have a knowledge of the truth. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You see, when you know the truth, you never have to worry about suffering a consequence for lying. When you know the truth and you speak the truth, you're free from your conscience and you're free in your spirit. When you speak the truth of Jesus Christ, He sets you free from the bondages of sin. And if the Son has set you free, then you are free indeed because you have a knowledge of the truth. L, we need to love one another. 
Amen. We are all brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And we are a family within the family of God. And we are to love each other as a family. In John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus was speaking and He said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, then you must show the love of Jesus Christ. Some time ago, working in the bus ministry at Van Buren First Assembly, one of our bus drivers who was committed to be there every time the door was open, as he was taking some children home one Saturday afternoon, I'm telling you, he had such a love for people because of the love of Jesus Christ that was in him, that as he opened the bus door and those children got off the bus, they turned around and smiled and waved at the bus driver and said, Bye-bye, Jesus. I'll see you next Sunday. You know, we may laugh at that and say, well, that's just a little kid. They're confused. No, I believe it's because they showed so much love of God in their life for these little boys and girls, the snotty-nosed kids that no one else wanted to take care of, that no one else wanted to take time for, but they were able to get on a, a hot church bus and go to church and, and have a place where they could feel loved and feel important, and then when they get back off the bus, they turn around and, and they're thinking, you know, I feel like I have been with Jesus today. And they turn around and they say, bye-bye, Jesus. I'll see you next week. We never know how many lives that we touch simply by showing love to individuals Amen. that we meet. Amen. We're going to see people come into this church that don't look like us, that don't dress like us, that don't smell like us. And they may get your seat and they may throw trash on the floor. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to love them. We're going to let them know, hey, we love you. We care for you. And we want to see God do a work in your life. I don't care if you stink. I don't care if you smell like cigarette smoke. I don't care if you come in half drunk and you knock the door down trying to get down here. But if they can get up here to an altar of prayer, I don't care if they bust the walls down. Get them down here in the altar. It happened in Jesus' day. They cut the roof off the church because a man was so hungry to get healed of, of a sickness in his body. They tore the roof off the church to get him to the altar. Yeah. If that's what it takes today, then do it. I'm hungry. I don't drive 50 miles to come to church every Sunday to play games. Yeah. I'm coming here for one yeah. purpose, and that is to proclaim the good news of Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. That there is a God that loves you, that He saved, that He came, that He sent His only begotten yeah. Son. He gave His life and shed His blood for you, yeah. so that you can have a chance to have eternal life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. M, we need to make disciples. We need to make disciples. Not just get people saved, but we need to disciple them. And teach them. That's the importance of having Sunday school. That's, that's why we need to get people in the church involved in reaching out and to uh, inviting people to come to church because we can all be a disciple maker who makes disciple makers who makes disciple makers. I don't know how many people are in this room right now, maybe 40 or 50 or so, but if every one of us in this room made one disciple this week and brought them to church next Sunday, you know what would happen? We would have 80 in here. Yeah. And then if we did it again the next week, there would be 160. The next week, 320. I've never seen it happen that way, but it can happen. Yeah. If every one of us would determine, hey, I'm going to reach out to one person this week, one person this week, we can make all the difference in this community. And we can win this community and win this county for the Lord Jesus Christ and let God make a difference. I'm not talking about going to another church and pulling people from another church. Let them stay there. There is plenty of unsaved people in this community Amen. that we can go fishing out there for lost souls and bring them here into this aquarium and let, let God give them life. Let God feed them. Let God multiply the souls that come into this sanctuary and let God on to the work because with God all things are possible. Amen. In never stop. Never stop praying. Never stop believing. Never stop praying for a miracle. Never stop believing for your lost children to come home. Never give up. See, I believe that there is a grandstand in heaven full of people that if we could hear them and see them, they would be shouting out to you, don't quit praying for that lost family member. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep on going. The battle is almost over. Jesus is coming soon. Don't give up. 
You see, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, 1, that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Never stop and never give up. Oh, we need to overcome all obstacles. The Bible says that we can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Yes, sickness is going to come. Troubles are going to come. Problems are going to come. It's part of life. But don't give up. Don't give in. Just keep on going. And God's going to bring you through. And you can live an overcoming life. Man. Romans 8.28 says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. P, we need to pray without cease. Amen. Keep on praying for that lost son or daughter to come home. Keep on living a life of prayer. Develop a relationship with God where you fellowship with Him constantly. You see, if you want to get to know someone, you've got to talk to them. And the way you get to know God is to read His Bible. That's when He talks to you. And then you pray. That's when you talk to God. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. I wonder what that means. It means pray without ceasing. Don't stop. Live a life of prayer. Keep an attitude of prayer. Ha have an attitude in your mind when you're on the job and say, Lord, I thank you that you give me the strength to do this job. As you're driving down the road, Lord, I thank you that this person that hit me head on as I'm driving down the road. As you're walking uh, to work or as you're driving your vehicle, wherever you're at, keep an attitude of prayer. And we can continue to live for Him. Q, basically, quit sinning. Again, it's about getting into the Word of God. If you want to live a life without sin, then you've got to get into the Word of God. Jesus was the only one who never sinned. But we can be like Him. We can be Christ-like. To be Christ-like means to be like Him. So how do we do that? We get into the Word of God. David says, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against Thee. Or let's reap a harvest of souls. Jesus cares about Every individual in this world, whether if they're in church, whether if they're out of church or not, he still cares for them. Because the Bible says he's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. I challenge you, get into an area of ministry. Get involved with outreaches of this church and we can make a difference. And we can go out and, and plant seeds in this community and, and reap a harvest of souls. Yes, we need to surrender all to Jesus. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 8 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom He may devour. We need to surrender everything that we are to Jesus Christ. Amen. T, thankfulness. We need to be thankful. For everything that God's done. Be thankful that you are alive. Be thankful that God has saved you. Be thankful that He has healed you. Be thankful for your church. Be thankful that you have a roof over your head and food to eat and clothes to wear. Never take for granted the things that God has done for you. In 2010, I had the opportunity to go to downtown Los Angeles on Skid Row. The worst neighborhood in North America. Hundreds of thousands of homeless people. They are fortunate if they have a tent to sleep in. Most of them sleep on the side of the sidewalk. There's no indoor, outdoor toilet for them to use. Everything runs down the side of the street. Nothing. Every one of us are one step away from that. The economy could crash. We could lose our job. Something could happen with our bank account. The bank goes in under. What are we left with? Absolutely nothing except Jesus Christ. Amen. And I remember as I was there on the streets, we were talking to those people. They had absolutely nothing. They didn't have a dime to their name. All they had was the clothes on their back. But as we would pray with these people, tears would run down their face. And I remember hearing this one lady as she was praying. She said, Lord, I have nothing but you. And she said, Lord, as long as I've got you, I don't need nothing else. And she was just sitting there weeping and the Spirit of God began to move upon her and she was speaking in tongues. And I thought, you know, we are so blessed and so many times we're spoiled, rotten beyond measure and we can't even worship because we get so uh, involved in the things of this world. 
We get so involved with the cares of this world that we can't even reflect on what God is doing in our life. But then someone who has nothing, they can open up their mind because they have nothing but Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, as long as you've got Jesus Christ, you don't need nothing else. You, we need to understand that we're a child of God. If you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're a child of God. In John chapter 1, verse 10 through 14, the Bible says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. To many that believed on His name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. V, we can live a victorious life through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can have victory through Him. We can have victory in our marriage. We can have victory in our uh, finances. We can have victory over every problem that we face. We can have victory over a bad doctor's report. Whatever you need, whatever you face in life, Put it in the hand of Jesus Christ and you can have the victory. Amen. W, we need to be a witness. We need to go out into the highways and hedges and compel people to come into the house that it may be filled. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we've got power to witness because of the Holy Spirit. He said He wants us to witness. We must do that. X, I was trying to figure out a word to use for X for a New Year's goal. All I can think of, X out anything that would keep you away from Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, it's about who are you serving? Amen. Either you give all of your life to God or you don't give none of it. Don't straddle the fence. Mm -hmm. See, some people like their coffee scalding hot, like I do. Other people like it icy cold. But try to take a drink of coffee that's been sitting out on the cabinet for a few hours. You don't like it. It's lukewarm. You want to spit it out. And that's the way God feels about any individual who is lukewarm. He said, I would rather you be hot or cold. Either live for me all the way or don't live for me at all. But don't be halfway in and halfway out. <clears throat> Why? We need to yield to the Holy Ghost. Sister Amen. Carolyn, if you'll come to the piano, pass me an auto gentle Savior. Key of F. We need to yield to the Holy Ghost. Quit trying to do things in our own way and let Him guide us. Let Him direct us. Follow his direction and his lead. In Psalms chapter 61, David said, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the north will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in the tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong thy king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will sing praise unto thy name forever. That I may daily perform my vows. He was yielding to God. He was yielding to his spirit. And see, we need to have a zeal to worship God in a deeper way. Amen. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. David said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generations. Worship Him. As we praise Him, we need to praise Him in spirit and in truth. David also said in Psalms 150, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the temple and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him with the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. It makes no difference if you can sing. It makes no difference if you can play an instrument. Everyone 
can praise the Lord. You don't have to play an instrument. You don't have to sing. But if you have breath, you can praise the Lord. If you can open up your mouth and, and let the air come in and out. He said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And so what I want us to do this morning, I would like for 100%, if everyone, if you can't, that's fine. I understand. I know because of health conditions, we can't always do this. But if you are able and you can come to this front, I, I encourage you, let's come to this front. Let's fill this front. Let's lift up our hands and let's just praise Him. Praise Him with all of our breath. Praise Him because of who He is. Praise Him because He is healer. Praise Him because He is Lord. Praise Him because He is Master. Praise Him because He is Savior. Praise Him because He is Redeemer.